Hey there guys and gals, it's me Norex and welcome back to beginner C++, I'm sorry, intermediate C++ programming. So in this video we'll be talking a little bit about constructors and destructors and I will actually introduce to you what they are. And since they're already related to classes, we definitely need a class, so let's go ahead and create one. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a class and I'm going to name it foo, just because. And I will be putting this CPP file over here and H over there. Alright, so we have these bunch of bullshits here that we don't care about, so we'll just erase them, delete them, you know, we don't care about them, we'll be writing them pretty soon. Alright, so there are two functions, or rather member functions or methods, the constructor, or CTOR, and a destructor, or, you know, as I would like to call it, detour. Not a lot of people call it detour, but I call it detour. Alright, so we've got the constructor and the destructor. Now, what the hell are these two guys? So, these are both a bunch of member functions, alright? Member functions, or methods, or rather member function or method, that is called when the class is created. Member function or the uh, or you know method that is called when the class is destroyed. All right, quite easy, quite simple. So we have. Let me just do something like this, and then do something like this. <coughs> I'm sorry. So we have a constructor and we have a destructor. Constructor is called when the member when the class is created. Destructor is called when the class is destroyed. Now, what do we mean by Create and destroy. Don't worry, we will see them. For now, let's just focus on the constructor. So, CTOR has no return value. It doesn't have any return value. We don't care about it. CTOR has. Um, CTOR can have input parameters. CTOR can be overloaded. All right. Let's talk about the destructor, DTOR. DTOR has no return value. It also has no return value. DTOR cannot have input params. DTOR cannot be overloaded. Alright? So, these are just some basic stuff that we have to talk about. So, they already have no return value. And note here, CTOR and DTOR are named exactly after the class. So if our class is named foo, CTOR is named foo. DTOR is also named foo, but with a bit of a difference. So CTOR has no return value, constructor has no return value, constructor can have input parameters, and constructor can be overloaded. Destructor has no return value, destructor cannot have input parameters, destructor cannot be overloaded. Now let's actually create them and see how they work. So we have a function, as I said, it should be named exactly after this class. And because it's a function, we open and close, and that's it. So this is my constructor function. Just as simple as that. Destructor follows the same thing, but with a bit of a difference. So in logic, this guy means the negation of whatever, or I don't know the exact name in English, but this is the, uh, the opposite of what we want to say. So we have like a, a thing, like a condition P, which leads to Q, alright? And I can say that not P is Q, alright? So Q is the opposite of P. This, this is exactly the same thing as a not in, uh, in Boolean operations, alright? So this is the exact same thing in logic, alright? So logically speaking, this, is happen this happens when the class is created, this happens when the class is destroyed, so we have to put one of these guys here. Alright, <coughs> sorry for that. So this guy can be overloaded, right? It also has a return value. But it can be overloaded, so let me just overload it with simple ease. Int bar. I like that. This guy it doesn't even have any input parameters, so it's, this is kind of obvious. All right? If it can't have any input parameters, if I put something like that, this is going to give me an error. See, a destructor may not have parameters. That's just as simple as that. And just because it can't have any parameters, it can't be overloaded. It just can't have any parameters. So, there we go. 
All right, that's basically it for this. And this is this this guy is what we call the default constructor. So if I just do uh, control and you know control dot enter this guy too, as well as this guy, <clears throat> I will have created these three guys. So these are our constructors. These happen when we call the thing. Let me just include IO stream so we can see how they happen. All right. So city out. Hello, I'm the default CTOR. Default constructor. Hello, I'm the overloaded CTOR. And down here we'll say hello, I'm the detour. Or rather, the, the detour, right? There's no constructed or default or whatever. No, just like that. And let me just put a std and l at the end of this guy right here. You know, just to make it simpler. Just to make it better. And there we go. Right, I'm pretty sure it was a pain seeing me encoding this tiny little window. But <laughs> don't worry. I do it a whole bunch of times. Alright, like every day. Anyhow, let's use that class and put it to test. So, the way we used it, obvious... Now, we include it first, we need to. We create a thing. Foo, F, and that's it. That's what that's the only thing that we care about. Now let's put a guy right there. No, breakpoint. And let's see it. So it's just going to say, hello, I'm the default C tour, but there is none of these guys because this object has just not been destroyed. And when we run that, what the hell happened? There we go. Huh, that's weird. I just run it again, and yeah, there we go. So it just opened and closed. The structure didn't get called because this guy was just not destroyed. Let's put this to test in another way. Alright, let's actually make a function test. And we create a foo function, or yeah, foo, foo object right here called f. And then let's call test. And then let's return nothing. Alright, uh, return one, maybe. We don't care. Alright. Let's put that to test, see how it works. So, as you can see, <coughs> both the constructor and the destructor both got called. So, this guy right here is created when we hit this line, when we execute this line. So, we, we, created, we created a full object named f, and then we hit the return, we come out of the scope, and this object is deleted. Alright? There we go. And yeah, don't worry about the last subject, it's not, it's not going to be remaining in memory, there's no memory leakage because the program just ends, there we go, and we, we just end it. We can also use pointer types to see the effect of constructors and destructors. So, foo pointer f, and then we have, you know, delete f. But here's the thing, I need to new everything I delete, if you remember right. Okay, so how do we do that? And as you have already seen, I have not used anything but the default constructor just by creating something like that. So let's create a foo pointer equals new foo. And as you remember, this is the way we create an array. But we don't want to create an array, we want to create a single object. And this is how we create the single object. So there are, as you can see, there are three things, three overloaded methods or functions for us. But we have only, we only have two, so what the hell? One of these guys is called the copy constructor, which I will be talking about pretty soon. So this guy is the overloaded constructor, this guy is the default constructor, and this guy is the copy constructor, which we will talk about soon. Okay, so let's talk about this guy first. You know, the simple constructor, just like that. We knew something, we don't give it anything. Let's go ahead and see how it works. So as you can see, hello, I'm the default C tour, right here. And uh, hello, I'm the D tour, which is right here. You no, know, quite simple. Now let's go ahead and call the second constructor. By just giving it an int, it just understands that it should run that guy right there. Hello, I'm the overloaded CTOR. Hello, I'm the DTOR. Quite easy, quite simple. Okay, that's all good and dandy. But what the hell was that third constructor? 
We didn't even talk about that. Well, there's something called a copy constructor, copy ctor, or what I would like to call C ctor, which is just absolutely not true, not correct. This is just the way I personally like to call this shit. All right, so we have copy constructor or C ctor. The way we implement it is like this. So we have foo, which takes a const. I haven't talked about this keyword. I know foo reference RHS or in or whatever, right? Like something like that. Now, if I take this away and, and try to do the constructor here, you can see that there is no name here, so we can name it whatever the hell we want. All right, so something like that should be. <coughs> I'm sorry, should be good. So this will be our copy constructor. Now, I will not be talking about this in depth because it's really not that important I will be talking about it in depth in the rule of three in the rule of five video not here we don't care about it here so basically what copy constructor is is when when you want to copy the data within this class from another class you use this constructor All right. so let's say I have another foo here f0 which has some sort of data in it it did really doesn't but when I pass f0 here you can see that it's it will be calling this guy right here all right I haven't talked about the const but I will be talking about it soon okay and so that's basically it about all the constructors that we care about there's one more constructor the move constructor which is for the move semantics move ctor or mctor which is a move constructor which is like this so it's like foo reference reference in which is just you know <laughs> not for now all right so move constructor or move semantics this is another type of constructor that was uh, that is kind of relatively new compared to these guys but we also don't care about it just yet not for this video this is for another video Anyhow, guys, that's it for the constructors and how you know how they work and all the good stuff. And uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about the class. Well, I mean, we have already talked about the class initialization. It's quite easy and simple, so I guess we've got two things in one. In the next video, we'll be talking about member initializer. All right, this is a very important topic. Um, no, just learn that and as you can see uh, object-oriented programming is not really that complicated it's, it's a whole it has to do a whole lot more with logic than it has with coding all right there's very little things to be concerned about you know just one keyword here one public keyword here and um, concept of constructors and these dis destructors you know it's just all about concepts and how we can put them to use and how we can create a great structure to ease the understanding of some project, some huge project for us. And that's the only way to do, that's the only way that works when, when we're talking about huge projects. Anyhow guys, that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. Maybe even leave a, maybe even subscribe. If you have any questions, do ask them in the comments and I will see you in the next one.